arranged a discussion. On behalf of his indisposed father, young Siddhanta Saraswati wrote an essay titled, The Conclusive Difference Between the Brahmana and the Vaishnava, and submitted it before his father. Despite his poor health, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was elated to hear the arguments that would soundly defeat the challenge of the smartest. Saranta Saraswati then traveled to uh, Midnapur, where the pandits from all over India had gathered for a three-day discussion. Some of the smarta pandits who spoke first claimed that anyone born in a Sudha family, even though initiated by a spiritual master, could never become purified and perform the brahminical duties of worshipping the deity or initiating disciples. Finally, Siddhanta Saraswati delivered his speech. He began quoting Shishi Gopinath Ki. He began quoting the Vedic references glorifying the Brahmanas, and at this the smartest scholars became very much pleased. But when he began discussing the actual qualification to become a Brahmana, the qualification uh, the qualities of the Vaishnavas, the relationship between the two, and who, according to the Vedic literature, is qualified to become a spiritual master and initiate disciples, then the joy of the Vaishnav haters disappeared. Siddhanta Saraswati conclusively proved from the scriptures that if one is born as a Sudra but exhibits the qualities of a Brahman, then he should be honored as a Brahmana, despite his birth. And if one is born as a Brahmana in a Brahmana family but acts like a Sudra, then he is not a Brahmana. After his speech, Siddhanta Saraswati was congratulated by the president of the conference and thousands thronged around him. It was a great victory for Vaishnavism. With, his, with the passing away of his father in 1914 and his spiritual master in 1915, Siddhanta Saraswati continued the mission of Lord Chaitanya. He assumed editorship of the Sanchan Toshini and established the Bhagavat Press in Krishnagar. Then in 1918 in Mayapur he sat down before a picture of Gorkishore Das Babaji and initiated himself into the sannyas order. At this time he assumed the sannyas title Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was dedicated to the young uh, to, to, was dedicated to using the printing press as the best medium for large-scale distribution of Krishna consciousness. He thought of the printing press as a brihat murdanga, a big murdanga. Although the murdanga drum had traditionally been used to accompany kirtan even during the time of Lord Chaitanya, and although Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati himself led, led kirtan parties and sent groups of devotees chanting in the streets and playing the, on the murdangas, such kirtans could only be heard for a block or two. But with the Brihad Murdanga, the big Murdanga drum, or the printing press, the message of Lord Chaitanya could be spread all over the world. Most of the literature Abai began reading had been printed on the Bhagavad Press, which Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati established in 1915. The Bhagavad Press had printed the Chaitanya Charitamrita with commentary by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati the Bhagavad Gita with commentary by Vishwanath Chakravarti, and one after another the works of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This literature was a spiritual heritage coming from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who had appeared almost 500 years before. Abhai had been a devotee of Lord Chaitanya since childhood, and he was familiar with the life of Lord Chaitanya through the well-known scriptures Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavan. He had learned of Lord Chaitanya not only as the most ecstatic form of a pure devotee who had spread the chanting of the holy name to all parts of India, but also as a direct appearance of Lord Krishna himself in the form of Radha and Krishna combined. But now for the first time, Abhai was in touch with a great wealth of literature compiled by the Lord's immediate associates and followers passed down in disciplic succession and expanded on by great authorities. Lord Chaitanya's immediate followers, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami, Srila Jiva Goswami and others had compiled many volumes based on the Vedic literatures com uh, conclusively proving that Lord Chaitanya's teachings were the essence of Vedic wisdom. 
There were many books not yet published, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was intent on establishing many presses just to release the sound of the Brihad Mridanga for the benefit of the people. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was teaching the conclusions of Lord Chaitanya's teachings and Lord Krishna is this, that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that the chanting of His holy name should be stressed above all other religious practices. In former ages, the other methods of attaining to God had been available, but in the present age of Kali, only the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra would be effective. On the authority of the scriptures, such as the Brihan Naradiya, Naradiya Purana and the Upanishads, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had specifically cited the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Lord Krishna himself had confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that the only method of obtaining him is devotional service. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Abai knew these verses. He knew the chanting and he knew the conclusions of the Gita. But now he eagerly read the writings of the great Acharyas. He had fresh realizations on the scope of Lord Chaitanya's mission. Now he was discovering the depth of his own Vaishnav heritage and its efficacy for bringing about the highest welfare for people in an age destined to be full of troubles. Shri Prabhupada Ki.